Hey guys, and welcome to Money in the Bank, the first PLE on WWE 2K24 Universe Mode. Before we begin, just want to thank you guys so much for the support on the first two episodes so far. It has been absolutely amazing. Appreciate every single one of you. We're going to get into the action in a second, starting with the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match as Alba Fire comes to the ring first. Just want to throw out a quick kind of like disclaimer here. Um, in this game so far, you know, it's very early on. It's less than a week old at this point. But uh, the AI versus AI ladder matches are kind of broken. So you will see a cut in the editing, which is not typical on my universe mode videos. But um, uh, basically what I had to do, and if anyone else is having this same problem, uh, if, if anyone noticed this, I know someone commented on the last video about how they noticed the same thing. They were talking about asking how the AI was. But yeah, the AI versus AI ladder matches are broken right now. I or originally had played this match while recording, like had watched it for 20 straight minutes, <laughs> and not one person even attempted to set up a ladder. Uh, so it was kind of bad. So what I have to do is take control of someone and just set the ladder up in the ring and then someone will climb it, like they'll climb it and try to get the briefcase. Um, but I, I realized I had to set it up. And the good news is that both the winner of this match and the men's money in the bank match, they actually set the ladder up themselves towards the end because you know that ladder mini game to get the briefcase? Well, once that, I think maybe once that like gets triggered and starts, then the superstars try to set it up and climb it. So I have noticed that. So it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it just wasn't perfect. But anyway, that's enough of that. I just want to let you guys know why if you do see like a cut in the action and it's not smooth, that's the only reason. I'm not trying to manipulate a winner or any of that stuff. I, I like to do AI versus AI on this series for the most part, unless I'm doing like some kind of obviously cutscene or storyline. I, I gotta do what I gotta do, but yeah. So anyway, let's get right into the action. Women's Money in the Bank match up first, and there's only one women's title on the line tonight. That will be Becky Lynch versus E.L. Scott for the SmackDown Women's Championship, but that'll be later on tonight as the Money in the Bank match first up as these eight women can just be so close to lifting that title whenever they want. we got a lot of good women in here, a lot of up with some up and coming, some already established. we got Tiffany Stratton, Dakota Kai, Valhalla, uh, Meechin, Alba Fire, Indy Hartwell, and Zoe Stark, and Asuka as well. Can't forget about Asuka, so... We got a very good mix here. Four women from Raw, four women from SmackDown. But just remember, doesn't matter if the winner is from Raw or SmackDown. They can they'll they'll still stay on their respective brand, but they can cash in if they want to make the trip to the other brand and cash it in. They can cash it in at any time. As you kind of just see madness all around right now. Tiffany Stratton working on Dakota Kai on top of the ladder in the middle of the ring. Everyone else is outside, just kind of. All over the place right now is Tiffany Stratton really working on Dakota Kai right on top of the ladder. So some extra damage there onto Dakota Kai is on the outside. Looks like it's Meech and Indy Hartwell tied up. There's Zoe Stark and Asuka, but looks like they're going to get back to it. And Valhalla with the boot. There's Zoe Stark on the outside. Alabama slam from Tiffany Stratton to Alba Fire. And Dakota Kai is in the middle. These three in the middle right now. Well, now four. But Alba Fire, Dakota Kai, and Tiffany Stratton. Keep an eye on them. I feel like they're going to do big things in this universe mode. Um, up and coming women that, you know, they can make a name for themselves outside of the regulars. Indy Hartwell, too, is doing pretty good so far in the action on SmackDown. Alba Fire, I don't think, has lost yet. I could be wrong. But Alba Fire has been pretty impressive. Tiffany Stratton just made her debut. Saw that in episode one of 2K24. And she picked up a win against Chelsea Green to get here. As action just kind of all over the place right now. As Tiffany Stratton in the middle of the ring. Working on Dakota Kai. Outside Indy Hartwell's up against the announce table. Is Valhalla going to do anything? And she's just going to slam Indy Hartwell's face right on top of the table. Not use it. So just kind of mayhem. Hard to follow in this one. Action all over the place. Valhalla right now uh, on Dakota Kai. So we start in Indy Hartwell. And it looks like so we start on the outside Indy Hartwell. Fireman's carry rolls through. And uh, Meechin uh, working on Alba Fire right on top of the ladder. Oof, that looked like it hurt right in the back of the head for Alba Fire. Springboard, nobody home from Meechin. And Tiffany Stratton and Asuka tied up in the middle. Just uh, 
action galore. Everyone beating the hell out of each other right now in this one. As Zoe Stark again. This time she has Dakota Kai up top. And it's Asuka and Alba Fire in the middle of the ring. At least Alba Fire has been in the ring a lot. But uh, no ladder set up so far. See how far this match uh, goes. There's still plenty of action on the outside. Asuka with a nice roundhouse kick there. But Alba Fire right back up. And they're working in the middle of the ring. Alba Fire and Asuka going head to head. On the outside right now, we got Michi and Indy Hartwell, Dakota Kai and Tiffany Stratton. But Dakota Kai's just kind of throwing everyone all over the place. Everyone's just getting thrown all over the place right now. <laughs> a lot of a lot of whips going on here. And right against the pole goes Valhalla. Everyone's outside of the ring now. And a nice suplex by Zoe Stark. Zoe Stark was impressive too in her debut a couple weeks ago. As uh, she picked up a good win to get here. A lot of these superstars picked up a good win. Valhalla, probably the most surprising of all. She upset Liv Morgan to get in this Money in the Bank match. Definitely thought Liv Morgan would win that one. Valhalla just powered through and won it with the Kentucky knee. Dakota Kai and Valhalla working in the middle of the ring. Both members of SmackDown. And Dakota Kai with a little botched knee, but the ladder got in the way. Helped her out. And Dakota Kai going to put Meechin in the corner. And here is Dakota Kai going to round the bases. Dakota Kai, boot to the face. And just a reminder here, I did talk about it, but I just want to let you guys know. The winner can cash in for Raw or SmackDown Championship at any time. They have the whole year to do it. So in case you were wondering about that, that's where that is. is and we got a lot of women in the middle of the ring at this point. As, uh, and, and then six of them go out. All at once, just like that. So it is kind of crazy how that works. Is you can all be in the ring one minute, and this usually they're usually always outside, which uh, I understand. I mean, if they stayed in the ring, nobody would ever win. But uh, it is funny how they always go outside. Now we got all eight women on the outside, and all different. I mean, they've really all just been trading who the heck they're they're beating up. It hasn't been a fixation on anyone in particular. It's just all been a trade. As now we got, looks like we got Asuka and Tiffany Stratton, Indy Hartwell and Meechin. Zoe Stark is looking for someone to beat up as she goes after Tiffany Stratton. Suplex on the ladder on the outside. Ladder did get thrown in the ring finally. And Zoe Stark is alone in the middle of the ring. See if she tries to set anything up. No, she's going to try to get Asuka away. Springboard crossbody from Zoe Stark. And a nice clothesline from Tiffany Stratton on the outside there. And Dakota Kai with the drop kick. It's just madness. Thesis pressed by Zoe Stark. Ground and pounding away. Zoe Stark missed the kick. It's uh, Dakota Kai with the ladder. Smacking Zoe Stark. And the ladder is finally set up in the middle of the ring. As the only two ladies in the ring right now. Dakota Kai and Zoe Stark. Nice insiguri by Dakota Kai. And a drop kick to Asuka. Let's see if she'll climb the ladder. She is not going to do that yet. Nice dodge. And Dakota Kai with a nice move on Asuka there. There's Zoe Stark climbing the top. And Zoe Stark is the first woman on the briefcase and already trying to work it down. Someone needs to get her off quick. That's already two down. Only three more to go. Tiffany Stratton looks like she's trying to knock off Zoe Stark. But Zoe Stark's still on the briefcase. Only two more to go. And Zoe Stark might take this home. But Tiffany, and there's only one more. Only one more left. Tiffany Stratton finally gets to the top and the ladder comes down on both women as that was really close. Nobody was knocking Zoe Stark off for a second. And I think the next person who gets a clean shot at it might win it. There's only one more hole to go. Only one more key to unlock, if you will. Whoever gets that is going to be Miss Money in the Bank. So be careful. Whoever climbs the ladder next might do it. But we will see as uh, we got more ladies in the ring now, four at a time. And the other four on the outside. Here comes Dakota Kai again. And she's hitting everyone with the ladder now she can. She's going to set it up? No, Asuka is going to block her from doing so. Drop kick to the back, though. And now Dakota Kai is Valhalla up and kicking her down as well. And the ring has cleared out momentarily. So, now that here comes Zoe Stark. And Zoe Stark's going to get the same treatment. Dakota Kai trying to clear out the ring right now. But Valhalla's going to put an end to that one. Spine buster. 
to Dakota Kai. And now Valhalla is going to work on the legs of Dakota Kai. And no can jump ahead here in this match. Now we got four women in the ring, four women outside again. Valhalla and Zoe Stark in the middle. Dakota Kai down on the floor. And that's Meechin who actually set up the ladder. But she's going to set it up and get out of the ring. Okay, interesting. Interesting. And uh, Tiffany Stratton was coming in the ring, but the ladder falls down. And now Stratton's actually going to set up the ring. Dakota Kai went for a drop kick. Is Dakota Kai going to climb the top? Dakota Kai is going to climb the top. Is she going to get the briefcase? If she can get her hands on it, she's going to win. But no, she's coming down for some reason. And Tiffany Stratton's going up. Oh, and Tiffany Stratton's right there. Dakota Kai's with her, though. Dakota Kai needs to knock her off. She can't. It's over. Oh, my gosh. Tiffany Stratton climbs the ladder. Dakota Kai was right there. And she just did, couldn't, couldn't get Tiffany Stratton off. And what a win. What an impressive win. Only her second match in this universe mode. And Tiffany Stratton is your Miss Money in the Bank. What is she going to do? Is she going to cash in on Raw or SmackDown? We'll see what she does. All right, next up, our Intercontinental Championship match. Santos Escobar versus Solo. We've talked about the backstory behind this match a couple times, but if you're new to the series or if you've missed that, basically what happened was we had an Intercontinental Championship tournament to crown our first Intercontinental Champion. Uh, Santos Escobar actually took on Solo in the semifinals of that tournament, and uh, on Raw, they went one-on-one, -on -one. they had a good match. Santos Escobar clearly had his full hand all the way around the ropes, and the referee still counted to three. So that was um, the story there. Solo would go on, obviously, to win. He went on to the final, and he beat Austin Theory at the Night of Champions PLE to win the Intercontinental Championship. This will be his first title defense as he takes on Santos Escobar, who obviously thinks he has a claim to that Intercontinental Championship. Well, he's going to get his fair shot here, one-on-one. -on -one. And money in the bank for the Intercontinental Championship. These two will square off. And uh, at the end of it, we'll see who's the Intercontinental Champion. Should be even match. Solo has looked good so far as the Intercontinental Champion. Not only has he won, he pinned and beat one-on-one -on -one the Raw Champion, Seth Rollins. We all know he had a little bit of help there with Roman Reigns in his corner. Distracting Seth Rollins a little bit. And he probably would have lost that match if Roman Reigns... Well, I would say he definitely would have lost that match if Roman Reigns wasn't in his corner. But either way, he still won and he still picked up a victory against the Raw Champion. As is Santos Escobar starting off fast with a boot right to the face. And he's working on the leg of Solo to start this one off. And Santos Escobar feeling good so far. As uh, Escobar with the whip on Solo... Against the ropes, and there we go. A couple dodges here, and nice drop on right on face first under the mat. Quick cover from Santos Escobar. Count of one and a kick out from Solo. Yeah, really early on in this one. Gonna do a lot more than that to win the Intercontinental Championship, but either way, it's a nice fast start from Santos Escobar. As uh, now it's Solo's, tone. So Solo's turn is a pop up Samoan drop. By Solo, so Solo trying to take control of this match, trying to regain the control. Uh, nice, another Samoan drop. Santos Escobar isn't in the LWO in this universe mode, or we should probably fix his uh, entrance attire in this uh, in this one. But uh, hopefully, this will be my reminder to do that. Nice uppercut, 360 uppercut there from Santos Escobar, and Solo, the champ, needs to go outside to catch his breath, but Santos isn't going to let him go far. Escobar looking for a suicide dive, connects onto the outside. Santos Escobar has brought the energy in this matchup as uh, he came ready to show what he's got and try to win that Intercontinental Championship. As Santos and Solo working on each other on the outside. Nice kick to the face from Santos Escobar. As uh, they'll lock up on the outside. Santos throwing Solo on the outside. Count of three. Escobar's going to get back in the ring. Solo's going to take his time, though. He's going to taunt to the crowd a little bit. Get his breath back. Looks like Santos was taunting too. Both of these guys just uh, just ready as uh, Santos Escobar and Solo now in the middle of the ring. And then and there's 
So the headbutt right to the arm. And working on that left arm of Escobar. So pounded his head right onto the mat. So so to pick up a win here will be our already respectable championship run as uh, he's won the tournament already to win it and then he would be defending it against Solo. Quick cover there but a rope break, early rope break called. So this referee is not missing the Santos Escobar rope break, that's for sure. Called it before even the count was, you know, before Solo even lifted the leg up for a count. Was told to keep an eye on that, I think, because uh, can't have Santos getting screwed yet again. That would just be a bad look for referees all over as it looks like that woman referee that was in the last game isn't in this one leg drop from escobar cover one two and a kick out at two but already a two count as Sol uh, santos has looked good against the champ and a nice uppercut yeah it looks like they got the real referees in this game from real life which is kind of cool they don't have uh, uh maybe they do have her i just haven't seen her yet and so oh, solo is busted open after that kick to the face, the champ is bleeding after this one, and he needs to go on the outside again and catch his breath. Santos was going over the top, but nobody home, and that allows Solo to get on the upper hand. But yeah, I haven't noticed her. She's here as a generic referee. She hasn't been used yet, and, you know, to be honest, we don't want her back. She's been fired. Unless she just comes back on her own, then, you know, maybe she'll, maybe she'll come back. Maybe she'll have a lawsuit against us for firing her. That'll be the backstory, but uh, the referees right now, I like them. They're, they're the ones in real life, which are pretty cool. I don't think they had them in the last game. I'm confident they didn't, actually. As Santos in the corner, taunting at the wrong time, of course. But a nice counter from him. As you see the blood starting to trickle down from Solo's head right there. He needs to get back in this match and fast. Santos Escobar has definitely looked better a little bit. And that's a nice uh, drop right there. As he's starting to feel the momentum a little bit. Leg drop. On the Santos. And does he want to go up top? Looks like he wants to go off the top rope. Might be looking for a Samoan splash. What has he got in store? And elbow drop right to the chest to cover. One. And a quick kick out at one from Santos. Surprised. It was only a one count. Didn't think that would end the match, but a one count at this point in the match. Santos Escobar is doing good. He's holding his own right now. On the top rope goes Santos. What's Solo got, oh no, I thought he was going to do uh, Superplex or something. And uh, wait a minute. Oh, Samoan Spike incoming. Samoan Spike by Solo. This might do it, but no. Rope break called again. Rope break called early on. Wow, it didn't even look like that was a rope break. But uh, yeah, it looks like that left foot is under the ropes. This referee with the Hawkeyes on these rope breaks calls him immediately before Solo could even really get into his pin. And that kick just busted open Santos Escobar. Oh, knee, what a vicious knee to the face. Both superstars now busted open in this one. As Solo slamming Santos' head on the mat. Both superstars bleeding. Solo going up top again. Now is it a Samoan drop? No. Uh, Samoan splash nose and elbow again. This time not going for the cover. And uh, Solo doing a number on Santos Escobar's face right now. Everything recently has been a shot to the face. And again, smashing the head against the turnbuckle. And a nice chop. And now Solo's going to take a break on his face and work on the arm. Good match so far. Both superstars busted open. Back and forth we go. Santos had the early momentum. It looks like it's been all Solo now lately. Already landed one Samoan spike. A lucky rope break got bailed Santos out. Might have kicked out, but that rope break was called super quick. Santos with a nice reversal as these two right now in the middle of the ring. Flipped against the ropes. That a nice backbreaker? Nope. Going to the leg drop. Nice move from Santos. Cover. Let's see if Solo's been taking a beat in this match. One. And quick kick out at one. He was not. Going to lose his Intercontinental Championship with that move. As Santos Escobar, though, feeling himself. Can he get all his momentum? Another clothesline. Santos has Solo where he wants him. But Solo's going to come right back. Took too much time. And it looks like these two are going to be trading blows in the middle of the ring. I think, yep, I think that's what they're doing. Trading blows back and forth. Solo with the chop. And it's Solo with the counter. Solo on the upper hand, but no, Santos with the counter. Santos and Solo, back and forth we go. 
Who is gonna win this blow trading? Another punch from Solo. And a hit from Santos. And a punch from Solo. What is gonna happen at Santos with a shot? And Santos with another shot. And another shot. But then Solo with a shot. And Solo, oh look at these two. Look at these two going crazy against each other. Already busted open. Shot to the head after shot to the head. And both these superstars, but it's Solo with a spinning Solo. That's gotta do it. One, two, and three. Solo retains. What a match that was. What an ending that was. Both superstars went ham on each other. They were both very bloody. Look at Santos. Wow. Absolutely busted open both sides of his head. But he prevailed. Santos Escobar put up one hell of a fight. But Solo is still your Intercontinental Champion. Next up, we have our SmackDown Women's Championship match. EO Sky versus Becky Lynch. Backstory behind these two. Well, EO Sky actually beat Becky Lynch twice. She pinned Becky Lynch uh, in a tag team match when it was her and Bailey versus Becky Lynch and Indy Hartwell. EO Sky's been kind of um, in a little bit of a feud with Indy Hartwell. These Those two definitely don't like each other. But uh, EO Sky not only pinned the champ in that tag team match, but she beat Becky Lynch one-on-one -on, -one on SmackDown. Now, it was simulated, but still, Yosuke beat Becky Lynch one-on-one -on, -one on SmackDown, giving her the right for this match at Money in the Bank as uh, Becky Lynch already beat one member of Damage Control. That was Bayley to win the SmackDown Women's Championship at Night of Champions, and now she's looking to beat another member of Damage Control here in EO Sky as uh, Becky Lynch looks a lot better in this game than she did in the last one. Man, I hated the way she looked in 2K23. Just hideous with that makeup, but looks good now as uh, we're going to get into this match in just a second. But yeah, only two SmackDown belts on the line tonight. Women's belt and the main title as well, the SmackDown Championship. Cody Rhodes takes on Sheamus uh, in a couple matches. So we will see that as uh, United States champ Dexter Loomis not on tonight. He, you know, he, he just won the title a couple weeks ago. And the SmackDown Championships, well, both of them, both the Smack, SmackDown Tag Team Champions are in the Money in the Bank match. Carmelo Hayes and LA Knight, the new champs, they're in the match. So, yeah, only two SmackDown specific matches tonight, but that's all right. Uh, as Becky Lynch working on that left arm early of EO Sky as uh, she is prepping for a disarmer, maybe. And that's her game plan going into this match. Weaken the arm, get the disarmer, walk out of here with the championship belt still intact. As now she's working on that left arm again with an arm bar. Here, but EO Sky quickly is going to get out of this one. Smart because, well, not smart, but just common sense. She needs to get out of those quick to preserve that arm because you know Becky Lynch is going to try to hit that disarmer at least once, probably multiple times. A nice German suplex by EO Sky. As, uh, yeah, Becky might have lost. Becky might have got pinned in a tag team match and she might have lost on a random week on SmackDown, but this is for the title. This is a PLE. This is uh, going to be a different Becky Lynch, EO Sky has not seen yet, at least you would think so, so this is not going to be easy, It'd be impressive if Yo Sky could pick up the victory, uh, evenly matched women in this, uh, especially overall wise, so you never know who's going to win this one as Becky Lynch counters as she gets back on the attack and right away, right after that arm again, she's got one arm locked up and she works on the other one, so smart from Becky Lynch's game plan to weaken the arms of Yo Sky, it's not Yo Sky. It's going to give Becky a little taste of her own medicine. Just work on the arm against the rope. Whip onto the ropes. EO Sky drops down and a German suplex again from EO Sky. Nice kick to the face. And punched right to the face as Becky Lynch goes down. EO Sky going to give a little taunt to the crowd as she's got time with Becky Lynch on the ground. Becky Lynch is... Uh, Look good, but like we said, it seems like EO Sky's been her kryptonite so far here on SmackDown, but we'll see in this one. Nice athletic move there by EO Sky. Knees right to the stomach. She's going to go for it again. Handstand right into the knee. She goes for a quick cover on Becky. The count, one, and a quick kick out at one there. Would be surprised if that was even a two count, to be honest, but 
Looked like it might have been for a second. Yo's guy in full control right now as uh, she maybe was going for another German suplex. Yep, she connects again with another one as Becky Lynch needs to take a minute and get out of the ring. Yo Sky, here she comes. Suicide dive onto the outside from Yo Sky. And now she's got full momentum now and she's feeling herself. Becky just crawled out of the ring for a breather and Io Sky won't let her breathe. And now on the outside, she's working on Becky Lynch. It's all Io Sky now, last couple minutes in this one. Are we going to have ourselves a new SmackDown Women's Champion? We will see. It's certainly looking that way right now if Io Sky can carry this momentum. And it's still Io Sky Hurricane Rana from Io Sky. See, maybe she may be going for a fairy tale ending or something. We gotta see. Nope. Down to the ground. Stop, but Becky rolls away from that one. And now it's Becky on the attack. And Becky Lynch with a nice suplex. And she tries to put a stop to EO Sky's momentum in this one. Kick to the midsection. And another nice move into an arm bar again. And Becky Lynch's strategy has not changed. Work on the arm, but Io Sky rolls out of this one. Not as quick as she rolled out of the first one. So she might be in a little bit of trouble as that arm's starting to wear on her. But that's all part of Becky's plan as Becky Lynch now on the attack. And again on the arm and the disarmer. The disarmer's locked in. The disarmer is locked in. And it's that left arm again. Is Io going to tap? No, she's going to get out of it. She was in that disarmer for a good amount of time, though. You know that arm is killing her. Becky Lynch almost had the title retained. And another German suplex from Io Sky. She's abusing that move here in this one. And she needs to get back on the momentum. It's been she's been she's lost it and it's been all Becky Lynch now. That disarmor was scary, Io Sky. A couple seconds away from probably tapping there. It wasn't a quick it wasn't a quick thing. She she was in trouble. Tarantula now on the ropes. From EO Sky, nice acrobatic move, but uh, can't Becky can't do anything on the ropes there. Can't tap there. And uh, Becky manhandle slam out of nowhere, and that might do it. Wow, cover one, two, and no kick out, kick out from EO Sky. Wow, so she got out of the disarmor. She kicked out of the manhandle slam. EO Sky putting up a fight. Becky's going to the top. What she got planned? Uh, nothing. Whatever she had planned, she rethought it. She gets back down and whips EO Sky into the corner. Might be looking for a superplex here. Let's see. Becky Lynch with EO Sky on the top. Becky Lynch. Superplex is coming and she connects. Superplex to EO Sky. And EO Sky crawling to the ropes. Desperate. For a break as Becky Lynch is on the attack and out on the outside. Clothesline. Over the ropes goes EO Sky. And it looked like EO Sky had momentum for a couple minutes there. She was really looking good. But Becky Lynch has shut that down. She's taken full control. Hit the disarmor and the manhandle slam. Hasn't been enough to put away EO Sky just yet, though. But she's still, she's not, she's not stopping working on that left arm. Of Io Sky, if she if she gets another uh, disarmor, this one is over. That is for sure. As Becky gets her back in the ring, and uh, they, yeah, I like to do that. Go on the other side, enter that way for whatever reason. Becky Lynch going to the top. What she got in store? Becky Lynch wants Io Sky up, and Becky Lynch. Oh, nice move right there. All Becky. And uh, she's got something planned here. This should do it if she connects. Manhandle slam again. Manhandle slam. That's got to be it. Here's the cover. Looks like Becky's going to retain. One, two, and kick out. Wow. EO Sky kicked out again. She kicked out of a second manhandle slam. Becky can't believe it. What does she got to do? Well, it looks like she's got to work on that arm. I think she knows what she's got to do. Work on that arm and hit another disarmor. That's the only thing she really she's got left. Manhandle slam hasn't worked. Eo Sky taking a beating in this one. Becky going up again. And Becky go around. I think it's called and a nice move. She's done it again. Go for the cover here. No, nope. Eo Sky crawls out of the ring. Smart move. Heads up move from Eo Sky. She has been getting dominated in the later stages of this matchup. Yes, guy needs to change that momentum and fast. It's been all Becky. Becky has not let up 
after that and throws the sky against the steps on the outside. Becky Lynch wants her up, wants her in the ring right now to end this thing finally once and for all. Becky's definitely done enough to win the match, but Io Sky is just, it just will not go away. It's going to take another big move at least. Becky Lynch slamming Io Sky down. Looks like she's going to go to the top here. She's going to go to the middle rope looking for a nice leg drop from the top. This could do it actually with all the damage she's been taking. Let's see. Becky Lynch with the cover. One, two, and three. Becky Lynch retains... And she dominates Io Sky. Io Sky, though, put up one hell of a fight. She was kicking out of everything. Kicked out of two uh, manhandle slams. Got out of the disarmor. But Becky Lynch picks up an impressive victory. And uh, she beats Io Sky. She's now beat two out of the four members of Damage Control. Uh, Becky Lynch, still your SmackDown Women's Champ. I just want to Four more matches to go, starting with the Raw Tag Team Championship match as it'll be Judgment Day. Dom Mysterio and JD McDonough representing the Judgment Day. They will have Finn Balor and Damian Priest alongside with them for this one as they take on the Creed Brothers for the Raw Tag Team titles that you see Judgment Day as um, right now Dom Mysterio and JD McDonough have taken on the tag team role because Finn Balor and Damian Priest are pursuing singles titles it hasn't much worked out for them yet especially Finn Balor he didn't get his name in the fatal four-way for the Raw championship but Damien Priest was in that match he actually got pinned in that match that's how Seth Rollins became champion and uh they both had a shot to be in the money in the bank match Finn Balor actually lost to Sami Zayn and Damien Priest did win his qualifying match so he is in the money in the bank later tonight but Finn Balor has had a rough go of it so far who hasn't had a rough go of it, though, is the Creed Brothers. They have been pretty dominant so far. They are your Raw Tag Team champs. They beat Los Lotharios. And um, it was a six-man, yeah, it was a six-man triple threat tag team match at Night of Champions between uh, Creed Brother, the Creed Brothers, Los Lotharios, and uh, who, who was it? It was, uh, why can't I think of it right now? It was to Judgment Day, yeah, of course. And, um... The Creed Brothers picked up the win, but now the Judgment Day get them all. Dom and JD McDonough get them all to themselves, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, during the course of the weeks leading up to the Money in the Bank, actually, Finn Balor and Damian Priest beat the Creed Brothers in a tag team match. They were showing JD McDonough and Dom Mysterio how it's done. They gave them the blueprint to how to beat the Creed Brothers, and let's see if they can show what they've learned and show worthy of being in the Judgment Day, that is. And have gold around their waist, and Damon Priest will be looking to take home that Money in the Bank briefcase to end tonight's show. So we'll see how that all goes. Tag into uh, Brutus Creed here as Dom Mysterio is going to work on him. And Judgment Day, you know, they're trying to assert themselves as one of the top factions in this universe mode. Well, to do that, you need the gold. And look how high Dom Mysterio went on that one. Brutus Creed, the strength. The strength of the Creed brothers is incredible. They're a good tag team. It's going to take the best work to beat them as they look good as Brutus Creed loves going on this top rope. He's going up top. He's got the misses <laughs> with that one. That was kind of a fail. He's usually pretty good in that top rope. You see Damian Priest undoing the turnbuckle, doing the top turnbuckle. So a little gamesmanship between Priest and uh, on the outside between, you know, by Damian Priest there as he takes one turnbuckle off. We'll see if they, they can use it. But look at the strength from Julius Creed up and drops J.D. McDonough on the ropes. Something that's a little less common in this game, but uh, still still there is the drop on the ropes. The famous drop on the ropes, which they like to do. As uh, Julius Creed here with the belly-to-belly -belly suplex, just tossing Don Mysterio like a rag doll. He wasn't even the legal man and just went to work on Don Mysterio. J.D. McDonough is the legal man, though, as... Uh, Creed and, and him will lock up as you see Damien Priest again doing the other turnbuckle now. So a lot of work going on outside the ring by Damien Priest. And you can see outside the ring too. It looks like 
Brutus Creed and Dom Mysterio are going at it on the outside. So none of the partners are on the apron right now. And Julius Creed has plenty of time to just dominate J.D. McDonough. He is looking good. Look at the size of Julius Creed, especially compared to J.D. McDonough. I mean, my goodness, like twice the size of him. Look at the strength. I thought that was a German suplex for a second. Different kind of suplex. This shot right to the face. And as Creed going to the top rope, they both can fly. Let's see if we see the shooting star press already. Nope, off the top rope. Julius Creed is going to land a drop kick. Beautifully executed, flawless form from Julius Creed off the top rope with that drop kick. And now JD McDonough counters. McDonough just looking tiny next to Julius Creed, man. Oh my goodness, he's looking so tiny. And him missing these shots doesn't help. But JD McDonough getting a little bit of momentum and that trouble in paradise there. And it goes for the cover. They count one, but a kick out at one from Julius Creed. Brutus Creed didn't even bother, he knew. His brother had that one in the bank as uh, J.D. McDonough showing off some strength right there. See if he goes for a tag. Uh, not yet. Still going to work on Julius Creed. And a nice clothesline taking him down. And uh, still not going for a tag. He's going to taunt. And it's going to backfire. Julius Creed now on the attack. And now, uh, my God, effortless. Just picking him up and tossing him down. As... Uh, but but the, the Dom Mysterio and J.D. McDonough need to prove themselves here. They're definitely living in the shadow of Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Much bigger names, but like we said, Finn Balor's been kind of losing. These two can get their hands on the gold. They'll definitely have proven their worth. And they don't need to worry about proving themselves anymore. Obviously, they'll need to defend the titles, but you know what I mean. That's uh, Julius Creed and J.D. McDonough still in the middle of the ring. And it'll be a tag for the Creed brothers. See if JD can make a tag. Uh, he had the chance, but he won't do it. Drop kick doesn't take Brutus Creed down. Another drop kick, but Brutus Creed cannot. It is not going down. Shot to the midsection, knees to the face. JD McDonough trying to do everything. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Brutus Creed just threw him like a rag doll. He went flying in the ring. A couple drop kicks didn't knock him down, and Creed just absolutely. Brutus Creed just absolutely tossed JD McDonough. He went flying in the air. As we get a little teamwork here from the Creed brothers. As the referee is occupied putting those turnbuckles back on. But the Creed brothers aren't going to cheat regardless. Nice move there. JD McDonough gets the tag he desperately needed into Dom Mysterio. Nice neck breaker from Mysterio. Dirty Dom at the stomps to the face. Dirty Dom here. Let's see what he's got planned. Tom Mysterio with a nice arm drag suplex. And it's uh, Damian Priest again on the apron with the turnbuckle. So, you know, they haven't used it yet to their advantage. It's been more of a nuisance to the referee who needs to keep putting the turnbuckles back on. But, uh, you know, Damian Priest doing his part, trying to get his boys the tag team titles. And there goes the referee. I think, put, yeah, there he goes putting the turnbuckle back on. They, they could use this to their advantage, but they're not going to. Looks like a hot tag into Brutus Creed. And now it's J.D. McDonough and Brutus Creed again. This didn't end well for J.D. McDonough a couple minutes ago. But we'll see how this ends. A nice counter. And he's working on the arm. So J.D. McDonough holding his own up at reversal. Maybe spoke too soon. Then there's Finn Balor who just did the turnbuckle. So they're both doing it. They're not doing much, but they're both trying. Brutus Creed at the top here. Are we going for Brutus Bomb in this match? What's he going to do? No diving shoulder tackle. Still painful, but not the Brutus bomb I thought was coming. So diving shoulder tackle, ref again going to the apron. As uh, this could buy... Yeah, no, nope, it doesn't matter. J.D. McDonough going to have a nice move. Ireland's call. Ireland's call right there from J.D. McDonough. And he's looking for something else. He might be looking for the devil inside. It's going to connect. Does he have the strength? Yes, he does. Devil inside the cover. Oh, but Julius Creed is right there. Came flying in the ring. Absolutely flying in the ring. He knew his partner was in trouble. J.D. McDonough with a couple good moves. Ireland's call to the devil inside. But Julius Creed right there to break that one up. But even though, you know, even though he's a small guy, he's he's definitely holding his own. J.D. McDonough, he's proving the doubters wrong a little bit. McDonough bringing Brutus Creed into the corner. That turnbuckle wasn't exposed. Something told me Damian Priest was probably going to expose it if uh, 
Bruce Creed didn't just go into the corner there. Match still underway. Bruce Creed taking a beating. Julius Creed not on the outside. Not sure where he is. And, and a nice uh, line salt there. Standing moon salt. Two. And three. It's over. Oh, my goodness. J.D. McDonough pins Brutus Creed. I did not see that coming. He hit a lot of big moves. And that standing moon salt was enough to pin Brutus Creed. We've got new Raw Tag Team Champions. First new champions of the night. We'll see if there'll be any more. We only got two title matches left. Then our Money in the Bank match. But what a performance from the Judgment Day. JD McDonough and Dom Mysterio are your new Raw Tag Team Champions. Coming up next, we have our SmackDown Championship match. Sheamus versus Cody Rhodes. And Sheamus, well, he... Uh, Maybe not the name you'd expect to be here with the talent we have on SmackDown, but he has been ultra impressive. He got his name in the triple threat match for the SmackDown title at Night of Champions by uh, beating Gunther one-on-one -on -one with the help of Imperium. Uh, with, you know, Gunther at the help of Imperium, he still beat him one-on-one, -on -one, so that was an impressive win. He, he didn't win that triple threat match. Obviously, Cody Rhodes won it, but he wasn't pinned in that match. And he beat Gunther and AJ Styles in a triple threat match to become the number one contender. So he should not be taken lightly, Sheamus. As, uh, he has earned his spot to be the number one contender for Cody Rhodes' SmackDown Championship. Cody Rhodes, on the other hand, he has looked so impressive. He has not lost yet. He's beaten everybody he's been up against. He actually went up against Sheamus one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I think it was the week before Night of Champions. It's actually a very entertaining match. Sheamus put up one hell of a fight. But in the end, it was Cody Rhodes who got the win. And he'll be looking to do more of the same here at Money in the Bank. This, this will be his first title defense. And that uh, comes against Sheamus. So like we said, a lot of talent on SmackDown will be gunning for that SmackDown title. If uh, Cody Rhodes can defend it here, will Gunther finally get his chance to get a big win? AJ Styles has been pushing for a match. As he also went one-on-one -on -one with Cody Rhodes and lost. But he put up one hell of a match as well. So that would be a sight to see, but that'll all be figured out. Uh, we got to see who's going to be champion after tonight, though, as uh, Cody Rhodes takes on Sheamus one-on-one. -on -one. And let's see if the magic of Sheamus can continue. He's just been winning. He's just been winning, even when it looks like he's not going to, you know, like we talked about. Against Gunther, you know, Giovanni Vinci and, and Ludwig Kaiser were distracting the referee, distracting Sheamus. It didn't matter. Both superstars look at the belt. Sheamus wants to be on the head of SmackDown here. He needs to get through the best, though. The best possibly on both brands. As Cody Rhodes has just been absolutely electric. But yeah, Sheamus has held his own. He beat AJ Styles and Gunther in the triple threat. I mean, the guy's legit. He earns his spot right here. As uh, already, Sheamus has got Cody Rhodes up top. It's usually Cody Rhodes getting off to the hot starts. But right now, Sheamus on the upper hand. Cody Rhodes has looked so impressive, like we said. Just springboard roundhouse after cross face, after close line, after springboard roundhouse, just like that. I mean, Cody Rhodes has just been dominant. It doesn't look like anyone can stop him right now. There hasn't been anyone that's even come close to looking as good as him. And uh, it's going to be a tall task for Sheamus today. But Cody Rhodes on the upper hand right away is uh, Sheamus coming back and uh, smacking down. Cody Rhodes telling him to get up. Sheamus wants Cody Rhodes up, but it's a bulldog from Cody Rhodes. Another springboard, but this time a springboard drop kick, not the springboard roundhouse. Cody Rhodes, though, feeling the momentum already. Rhodes, belly to belly, no counter. Sheamus is going to punch his way out of this one. And Sheamus going to throw Cody against the ropes with a nice slam right there. And down on the mat. Those Cody Rhodes of Sheamus taking the momentum here momentarily. Spinning out of the ring or rolling out of the ring is Cody Rhodes for a sec. Sheamus on the outside though, not letting him leave. Kind of botched that clothesline. And now Cody Rhodes on the attack with the combos and the headbutt down to Sheamus. As Cody Rhodes will be looking to throw him against the announce table, but Sheamus with a counter. Count of three on the outside, nothing to worry about. Sheamus looking for a power bomb. And Sheamus with the powerbomb. No, Cody Rhodes is going to punch his way out of this one. And counter and a nice takedown on the outside from Cody Rhodes. 
Cody Rhodes working on the head area, neck and head area of Sheamus. Trying to wear him down for that uh, same kind of rotation in the crossroads there. As Cody Rhodes feeling himself. Count of six on the outside now. It's getting close. Need to get back in this ring. Seven. The count's getting faster and faster. And Rhodes finally will throw Sheamus in the ring. And of course, he will enter through the other apron because they just like to do that in this one for whatever reason. Anyway, Sheamus now on the attack. And Sheamus a nice knee right to the face of Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes right back up though. And Cody Rhodes looking for Crossroads. Connects. Just like that. It might be too early on. Let's see. One. Two and three. Wow, Cody Rhodes makes light work of Sheamus. Wow, what was wrong with Sheamus there? He usually puts up much more, much, much more of a fight than that. He was just absolutely caught off guard by that crossroads, I think. Couldn't kick out. And Cody Rhodes, in absolutely quick fashion, retains the SmackDown Championship. All right, only two more matches left, and this one is for the Raw Championship. Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. This one's been brewing for a while now, as uh, last couple weeks, Roman Reigns has uh, got tried to get in the head of Seth Rollins a little bit. Remember we talked about earlier, Solo went one-on-one -on -one with Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns definitely caused the distraction, leading to Seth Rollins losing to the Intercontinental Champion Solo on Raw, and then... Uh, it was a tag team match last week between Solo and Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins teamed up with the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship, Santos Escobar, who lost earlier tonight. And uh, that was a good match as well last week. But um, here we go, one-on-one, -on -one, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns earned this number one contender spot. He's been winning pretty well. He... You know, him and Randy Orton went one-on-one -on -one for the number one contender spot because they both weren't pinned in that fatal four-way for the Raw Championship. Roman, uh, Seth Rollins, excuse me, he pinned Damian Priest and Roman Reigns and Randy Orton were too busy fighting on the outside. So they went one-on-one. -on -one. Roman Reigns picked up the win. It was a good match. Randy Orton put up one hell of a fight, but Roman Reigns won. And uh, that's where we are now as... Roman Reigns gets his shot for the Raw Championship. He looks on. That belt would look good on him. He's already got the red on his wrist. So he's thinking he can manifest that into a win. But Seth Rollins has looked pretty good as well. And he goes off real quick with a sling blade to start off this match. As Roman Reigns is down on the ground to start this one. Seth Rollins' attire in this one, the pink. We'll see. We'll try to change that up periodically. It gets tiring after a while for sure. Uh, so we'll see what you do about that as Seth Rollins still on the attack here to start this match off. It's going to take a lot to beat either one. I'm, I'm sure it's not just going to take one finishing move to beat the opponent, whoever whoever has it. I don't I don't think it's just going to take one spear, and I don't think it's going to take one curb stomp. So buckle in. This should be an entertaining match as uh, we've got this. And then the Money in the Bank match, the men's Money in the Bank match, obviously, and... That will conclude our Money in the Bank PLA. It's been a good PLA so far. We've, we've had only one new champion, well, one set of new champions, which was the Raw Tag Team title switched hands. So within the span of a, a week, both tag team titles have switched hands, as we saw on SmackDown, last episode of SmackDown, DIY lost their tag belts, and tonight the Creed Brothers lost their Raw Tag Team belts. So we'll see if any other title, well, this is the last title, but we'll see if another title could change hands here. It's, it's very possible. Roman Reigns is not going to be easy to beat, but Seth Rollins with the stomp right there. And Rollins going for a quick cover. Uh, nothing's been done. I'd be surprised if it gets past one, and it doesn't. Quick kick out from Roman Reigns. As he'll go to the outside and come right back in just to buy himself a little bit of time. But Seth Rollins on the attack with a nice combo. Nice counter from Roman Reigns. Bringing down Seth Rollins. And uh, Roman Reigns here with the strength and forces Seth Rollins up and over for a slam. And now Seth Rollins on the attack. So back and forth we go in this one early on. As it's Roman Reigns on the attack now. Fireman's carry and it looks like we're going to the rope. So the turnbuckle, it is the turnbuckle. Dropped Seth Rollins right on that top turnbuckle there. He knew it was either going to be drop on the ropes or drop on the turnbuckle. And a quick cover from Roman Reigns. Let's see if this gets past one. I doubt it. One and a kick out 
from Seth Rollins. So, a couple quick covers early on just to try to get their opponent off guard. We, this match, I think, has already gone longer than uh, Cody Rhodes versus Sheamus has. And now Seth Rollins kick to the midsection. Pedigree, pedigree on Roman Reigns. Going for the cover. Here's the count. One, two, and a kick out from Roman Reigns. Not surprising with the kick out, but maybe surprising a pedigree. Came out of nowhere right there from Seth Rollins. Is, wait a minute. Seth Rollins going for a curb stop. Rollins, curb stop. Is he going to defend his title right away? Let's see the cover. One, two, and kick out from Roman Reigns. Wow, that would have been a surprising, very quick victory from Seth Rollins. Already hit a pedigree and a curb stomp, but Roman Reigns kicks out. Let's see what Seth Rollins has planned now. He's going to the apron, but then coming right back in. Okay, okay. Not sure what the plan was there, but... Whatever it was, he changed his mind and a knee right to the face. Busts open Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is busted open and Seth Rollins isn't going to let him breathe on the outside. He's got a suicide dive plan. There he goes. He goes over the ropes. And what an acrobatic move from Seth Rollins onto the outside. It's been all Seth Rollins right now. Pedigree, curb stomp, busted Roman Reigns open. Seth Rollins looking to defend his championship and it's looking good right now. But a nice counter from Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, all he needs is just a slither of momentum. You know that Superman punch can come out of nowhere. And the spear's not far behind. So he's starting to taunt, starting to feel a little bit better about himself. Count of six on the outside. It looks like they're going to get back in the ring. As Reigns throws Rollins in, and he'll get in himself. Couple cut from Roman Reigns. Couple combos here. Kick to the midsection. Looking for a power bomb. Connects with a power bomb. Looking for another one. And a nice Samoan drop from Roman Reigns. And a cover from Roman. Got a little bit more damage now, but a quick kick out before there's even a one count. Referee took a little bit of time, but yeah, still not nothing crazy from Roman Reigns. Just expect Seth Rollins to kick out of that one. And now Roman Reigns, though. He's definitely, has, he's definitely on the momentum. Even when Seth Rollins has a punch in, it's back to Roman Reigns, who slams down Seth Rollins again. You see the blood there pouring down from Roman Reigns' face. So he's taking some good shots in this one already. And choking out Seth Rollins in the corner, but he needs to get off Seth Rollins there. And Seth Rollins back to his feet. And a nice neck breaker and coming. No, <laughs> hit right back in the back of the head. Knocks Roman Reigns down. And wait a minute, another curb stomp. Another curb stomp. Out of nothing, he hits another curb stomp. This might do it. Seth Rollins won. Two, and a kick out again. Roman Reigns has kicked out of a second curb stomp. Oh my goodness. Rollins going to the top though. It's a frog splash time. I think maybe he wanted it, but no, it's a cross body. And back to a cover, this might be it. One, two, and a kick out from Roman Reigns. Remember he already suffered two curb stomps, so anything could put him away at this point. I thought that might've been it for a second. Roman Reigns holding his own so far. He's on very thin ice, though. He kicked out of two curb stomps. I don't think he can kick out of a third one. Moonsault right there. Uh, springboard. Off the springboard, I should say. And now Roman Reigns. Courtney right to the face. This might do it. If he goes for a cover, he's not going to. Roman Reigns smartly going to get out of the ring. Buy himself some time. Seth Rollins still very much in control, but a smart move right there from Roman Reigns to buy himself time. And pedigree coming. Another pedigree, this time on the outside. Seth Rollins needs to get Roman Reigns in the ring. Go for a pin. He definitely has him where he wants him. He's got him on the ropes. Not literally, but figuratively. Got him right there. Just needs to get him in the ring, though. He's still working on him on the outside. Working on that already busted open face of Roman Reigns. Count of five, Rollins will get Roman Reigns back in the ring. And Rollins going up top. Is he now going for a frog splash? Seth Rollins with an elbow right to the back of Roman Reigns. He's going for a cover. This might be it. Roman Reigns is taking a ton of damage. Here's the cover. One, two, and three. It's over. Seth Rollins picks up a win. Wasn't on one of his signature moves, but he did hit two curb stomps, two pedigrees. He deserved that win against Roman Reigns. He was the better opponent tonight, and Seth Rollins retains the title. So that's it for your championship matches today. Only one 
New champ was the Raw Tag Team Champions, and a very impressive win from both the Raw and the SmackDown champs. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins looked very, very impressive. As Cody, I mean, Seth Rollins, excuse me, he does the, the actually kind of quick work of Roman Reigns. Very dominant win, much deserved. Seth Rollins still on top of Raw. Last but certainly not least, it is time for the men's money in the bank ladder match as Drew McIntyre comes to the ring first. Our main event tonight, who will be Mr. Money in the Bank? We have a star-studded lineup for you on this match. Drew McIntyre carrying cross now coming to the ring. Four representatives from Raw, four representatives from SmackDown. Just like the women's match, whoever wins will stay on whatever brand they're on. They're not going to cross brand, but if they want to show up on, let's say, if Karen Cross won. He's on Raw. If he wants to show up on SmackDown and cash in for the SmackDown Championship, he is well within his right to do so. It's not just for the brand you're on. It could be for any title. Obviously, the odds are you probably use it on your brand, but it doesn't mean you have to. As uh, we'll see one half of the tag team champions come into the ring. Carmelo Hayes, his tag team partner is in this match as well. He'll be in the ring in a second in LA Knight. We got some of the SmackDown guys coming right now. We got four from Raw, four from SmackDown, the four from Raw. If you're new to the series, it's Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn, Karrion Cross, and Damian Priest. The other four, obviously from SmackDown, but I'll name them anyway: Carmelo Hayes, uh, LA Knight, Kevin Owens, and Jay Uso, who beat the U.S. champ to get here. There is LA Knight, both members of the SmackDown Tag Team Champion. SmackDown Tag Team Champions are here in this Money in the Bank match. They actually were in the, the six-pack challenge at the Night of Champions as well. LA Knight actually eliminated Carmelo Hayes, but their friendship continued. It didn't alter, and it proved so last week when they won the tag team titles. Jay Uso in this match as well. He was the last guy in it. He actually beat United States Champion Dexter Loomis to be in this match. So maybe uh, we'll revisit that after this PLE as uh, Jay Uso Definitely deserves a shot at that United States Championship at the least. We'll see if he even wants it. I'm sure he's got his eyes on the briefcase first, but uh, definitely has a claim for that United States Championship match. I don't think General Manager Nick Aldis will disagree. I don't, I don't think it'll be much of a fight there. He deserves a spot, or a chance, I should say, to go at the United States Championship as Right away, uh, it didn't take long for pretty much everyone to get outside the ring, as uh, that's what we've come accustomed to in these matches. So we got right now, what do we got? Just a whole mess, just like the women's match, just a match. Everyone's probably going to work on everyone. Jey Uso working on Damian Priest on the outside. We've got Carmelo Hayes and Sami Zayn going at it. They're the tag team champions right there. LA Knight throws Carmelo Hayes out of the way, but nothing more to it than that. Drew McIntyre doesn't know who to take on right now, but uh, looks like some teamwork from the tag team champs, and they'll go their separate ways. Nope, Carmelo Hayes going to get his partner from behind with the German suplex as the Damian Priest alone in the ring right now, but he's got no ladder around him, and he's going to go outside. Carmelo Hayes does have a ladder. He was putting it to good use before uh, the tag partner LA Knight put a beating on him. So actually, uh, surprisingly, they actually kind of went after each other quite a bit in this match, but... They know how to put personal grudges aside. Drew McIntyre plants LA Knight on the ladder there. It's Damian Priest and Karrion Cross going at it as well. Sami Zayn doing good, some good. And Kevin Owens looking for another weapon. Carmelo Hayes working on Drew McIntyre with a suplex on the outside as Kevin Owens has a ladder of his own, but decides to just drop it and do nothing with it. So it's a whole cluster right now on the outside we go. As... Uh, McIntyre and LA Knight now in the middle of the ring. But again, no ladder in sight just yet. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a minute before we get a ladder involved, it looks like. As uh, Jay Uso on the outside, getting beat up by Kevin Owens. It's Carmelo Hayes, Sami Zayn, Karrion Cross, and Damian Priest squaring up. And still just LA Knight and Drew McIntyre in the middle of the ring. Karrion Cross brushes off the announce table, but we'll see if it actually gets put to use. Actually, he's looking Think he's gonna do something to Kevin Owens, but Jay Uso saved Kevin Owens there. Not sure if that was on purpose or if Uso was just trying to get someone off guard. 
nonetheless, Kevin Owens gets saved by uh, it's saved of potentially being put through an announce table. We got four or five guys in the middle of the ring now. The ring's starting to get a little bit crowded. Damien Priest throws Sami Zayn out, and he goes out of the ring us himself as uh, LA Knight goes over the top rope. Jay Uso looking for a big move here. Uso going to dive to the outside. High flying Jay Uso with the suicide dive. And Damien Priest with a clothesline on Sami Zayn as we're going to move his match a little bit forward. Now we finally got a ladder set up in the middle of the ring. And look at Sami Zayn. He's all alone in the middle of the ring here. Sami Zayn. He's going to be the first to try for the briefcase there as he's got one notch one notch down, but Drew McIntyre is going to push that ladder out of the way. Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre were there to make sure Sami Zayn is not going home with that briefcase, at least not yet. So Damien Priest plants Sami Zayn in the middle of the ring. And now Priest got the ladder. He's going to go hit Will, hit uh, at Will with it. He hits Sami Zayn, hits Drew McIntyre. And looks like he's going to readjust it. Not not quite centered just yet. As there we go. The ladder's in the middle of the ring now. As Damien Priest and Drew McIntyre are going to fight over it. Before anyone can climb it. There's Jay Uso climbing the top. And Uso's going to look for a spot. He's gonna, he might be coming home. He gets one notch off. Carmelo Hayes and Kevin Owens trying to break things up. And uh, Jay Uso gets one notch off before Karrion Cross pushes the ladder away. So we got some movement here, though. At the top of the ladder, and that briefcase is a couple notches away, and it's going going crazy right there at the top, as you can see. <laughs> Not sure what that's all about, but uh, that's funny. But yeah, we got a couple more left. If anyone could be on there for a few minutes, it might be a problem. Damien Priest sets up the ladder, but it looks like he might be looking for something on Karrion Cross on the apron. He is going to look for something. Is this a superplex? Hurricane Rana? Hurricane Rana off the top, and the ladder falls down. But a nice move from Damian Priest. And now we got more guys in the ring. we got half of them in the ring. Sami Zayn is knocked out on the outside. Karen Cross trying to catch his breath. And Jay Uso is working on chair shots as he just hit... I think that's LA Knight down there. It is, yeah. And Jay Uso still working with the chair on the outside. He's going to town on that chair. Is that to Sami Zayn? It is to Sami Zayn. Hard to follow this match. A nice clothesline from LA Knight on the outside. A lot of things going on in the middle of the ring. Damien Priest is looking to set up there, but a neck breaker from LA Knight. And it's Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre going at it again. These two have been beating up each other quite a bit in this match. See if that uh, turns into anything or not. Karrion Cross was looking for a clothesline, but I guess Carmelo Hayes had eyes in the back of his head. Nice counter right there from Carmelo Hayes and a nice kick right to the face. Beautifully executed in Seguri. From Carmelo Hayes, the ladder was set up at LA Knight, is uh, going to set up in the corner, and his teammate Carmelo Hayes is going to give him a nice drop kick for his efforts. It's Carmelo Hayes working on uh, Karen Cross, and Priest sets up that ladder, but Carmelo Hayes with a code breaker, code breaker on Damian Priest, and uh, Carmelo Hayes is all alone in the ring as he just knocks off Karen Cross from the apron. This might be the time for Carmelo Hayes, he's there. It's Sami Zayn coming in though, trying to break this up. Damian Priest, don't know what he's doing, but Carmelo Hayes is two notches away. Carmelo Hayes might be there. He's white. He's right there. Can Carmelo Hayes come away with the money in the bank? Oh no, he just missed. And Sami Zayn saves the day, just in the nick of time. It looked like Carmelo Hayes was going to win, but just in the nick of time, he, Carmelo Hayes missed that last notch. And uh, Sami Zayn pushes the ladder away. My goodness. Carmelo Hayes was almost, he was this close to becoming Mr. Money in the Bank. Just misses out. Now the, the, the ring is empty for Sami Zayn. Let's see if he takes advantage. Uh, he's going to taunt first. He had plenty of time to climb this ladder. Next guy up there probably wins it. And it's still Sami Zayn alone in the ring. Guess he's not going to set up the ladder. Damian Priest coming in, and there goes Sami Zayn on the outside. Now Damian Priest is going to set up the ladder and he is going to, well, that, that ladder comes right back down as Kevin Owens rolled into the ring. Anyone's anyone's matchup right now, Next, like we said, next person up is probably it. Hurricane Rana from Sami Zayn on the outside to Carmelo Hayes, landing Carmelo Hayes on both ladders. It's kind of impressive. And the ladder was set up again, but Carmelo Hayes coming into the ring inadvertently knocked that ladder down yet again. 
as a Carmelo Hayes and Damian Priest in the middle. Springboard from Carmelo Hayes. Nice clothesline right on top of the ladder right there. As Damian Priest and Carmelo Hayes in the middle again. They've met up a couple times here. Damian Priest says Carmelo Hayes up top. Might be looking for another hurricane run off the top rope. He is looking for exactly that. Carmelo Hayes goes down on the mat. It's Damian Priest has the advantage. Sami Zayn on the outside throws LA Knight. Pretty much answer is who is going to set up this last ladder. Oof, that looked like it hurt on the outside. Kevin Owens gets planted right on the ladder. Carmelo Hayes with a suplex cutter to Damian Priest. Oh, halluva kick out of nowhere from Sami Zayn. LA Knight had that ladder up, but Sami Zayn with a halluva kick. And look at Damian Priest and LA Knight are absolutely knocked out. Wait a minute, Sami Zayn, he set up the ladder. He's going up there. Two guys in the ring are knocked out. Nobody else is in the ring. This might be it. Sami Zayn, can he do it? If he can successfully do it, he's done it. Sami Zayn has won it. He takes home the briefcase. And he is Mr. Money in the Bank. Wow, what a match. Looked like Carmelo Hayes was going to win it. He was so close. It was actually Sami Zayn who pushed the ladder away from him. And a few minutes later, Sami Zayn has the ultimate opportunity. Sami Zayn is Mr. Money in the Bank. I hope you guys enjoyed this PLE. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. We'll see you on Monday Night Raw with the fallout from Money in the Bank next.